It's wonderful to be home and to come home. I was born and grew up uh, about 10 Swedish miles from here in a small village or some hell that's called Högsby. And there my father was an electrician and it was fantastic to follow him out to the farmers and uh, see when he installed electricity. Because I'm not born at the 18th century, but anyhow, uh, out in the farms there was still a need somewhere to have electricity. So my research started very early. Well, um, my ti the title is here, How Can We Understand the Change of Habits in the ICT Society? And ICT stands for Information and Communication Technology. It differs in different countries, IT and ICT, uh, computers, etc. So, I will start with some um, images. Children in old days and now. The first was in my time and <laughs> the second could be in some or many families today. So this is a person on paternal leave. This is um, very often you see this type of picture. And um, do we really talk with the kids today? Um, this summer I was visiting uh, an outdoor museum. I enjoyed it very much and people did but not all were really there. They were somewhere else. And this is out on an intimate date, maybe. I will dig down in this model a bit, because this is a perspective, a framework that has been developed over the years that I have been doing research within the social and psychological impact of computerization, or ICT, what we say now. And it has its roots back in the 70s. And we followed over various periods of computerization. So this is really summarizing up this type of research, and I will come back to this. But first, what is convergence? Convergence actually is a move towards a common content, and at this move there become another shade, another color, other dimensions. In the network society, there are a lot of convergences going on, dependent on the fact that there are quite new communication patterns. There is direct communication, there is immediate communication information, there is borderless global communication, and there is a relocation of power. So now I will dig down into the different parts of the model. So let me see here this. We start here. This convergence is what we call ICT. It's a convergence between computer technology, teletechnology, mostly wireless nowadays, media technology, and then globalization. It's a convergence between values and norms, technology, all over technology, and labor market. Life environment is a convergence of work environment, home environment, and public environment. And then we have the professional role, the private role, and the citizen's role are coming to become a life role. 
But there is another world out there, quite a new thing that is from the beginning called virtual reality. And this, what this means uh, uh, is that, let me show you, very simple. Um, we go into boxes and we pop up and then we go into another, maybe more transparent box, I don't know, a little bit transparent. And sometimes we are just half there. Presence is a valuable uh, thing nowadays. Many people are half present. But something else happens here when we move from the boxes. We take on another balance between authority and grassroots. We become strengthened as civil society. We connect to the world in the boxes. So this is a very thrilling thing going on. So the virtual realities, we have them all over. But the people there in the middle, what happens with the people here? They could take on an active reaction, they could involve themselves, they could engage themselves, they could some way protest, but they could also be a passive reaction. They could be alienated, they could withdraw, they could develop various psychosocial symptoms. <coughs> so, it's a very dynamic process going on. But what happens with the humans? And this list of phenomena are the ones that are very sensitive to uh, the use of ICT, according to our research. It's identity or self-esteem, if you want, self-perception, social competence, integrity, trust, dependency, empowerment, as I told you before, empathy, and also stress. And stress is increasing total in the society, in many cultures, in most cultures. And it has to do with the fact that our level of aspiration, our level of expectancies on ourselves and our others are increasing. We tend to adapt to the, the speed of the machine. It's a multifaceted and complex situation for the human beings. Back to the convergence model. Now, look, take a look at the dynamics in the model. These arrows, the very tiny ones here, up here, these are interactions between the clusters. Interactions, interactions. But these broad arrows, these two, mean the main direction of the movement in the circle. And here, there are two clusters that are very important. The speed of the R&D in ICT. There is enormous speed in the development of information communication technology. The same also is globalization. It's an increasing globalization going on, even if there are revolts towards the globalization, but still, it's intense. And this interaction here, between these blocks here, it gives a powerful push in the direction of the wheel. So it's spinning around faster and faster. And the fact that economical transactions are, uh, when these are taking place, nowadays you use robotics. And this is increasing the risk for economical crisis in the world. Back first. 
actions are definitely possible in this enormous complex situation. And what is needed for actions? We are in the middle here as human beings, and we connect on these various clusters, but we need to be aware of the speed of the wheel. We need to be aware of its causes and also its complexity. But how do we deal with complexity? How could we handle this enormous complex situation? Well, I turn to system theory and to the phenomena that is called societal self-production. It's human beings. They are producing and reproducing themselves, including the social and psychological things. ICT tend to produce and reproduce itself. Nature produce and reproduce itself. So, if you look at this picture, everything tends to be interaction with each other. But how do we deal with this ambivalent situation where everything interacts with each other? It moves us over to the big question. What is the good ICT society? What is it about? And many of my talks over the years, I finished with my visions. What is in a good world? What are we striving for? And this here is a formal, the first formal statements, what is a good society? It was actually in Vilnius 2003, where um, ministries, from all over the world, both developing and developed countries met with the research society. And they formalized something that was called the Vilnius Declaration. And it was formulated and it was emphasized that information access should be there for all. It would be quality of life for all. It should be deepening of democracy integration and respect for diversity, enrichment of the social contact between people, autonomy, various kinds of overload and stress should be prevented, and e-cooperation and peace. This was the list. And then this was followed up by a huge meeting in the developing countries. And there the NGO, organization around the world came to discuss with the authorities. And this was some years later held in developing countries. And as I look back to these years, I could see that this was an awareness period, what ICT could create. So I think it was the something that led forward to the Arabic Spring, and to occupy Wall Street, or other things like that. So, and I myself was, in, during the year of 2000, people were enthusiastic. And <coughs> I gave a talk in San Diego at the Millennium Conference, and I said, future ICT applications are like seeds. They pop up all the time. And those applications that will be the one that survives are the one that fulfill human needs. So it's the human need of learning and growth, of social belonging, of meaningful life content, the need for confidence and influence, and of course the basic human needs. And I added, we will have a world, a field of flowers. So everything was really uh, wonderful about 2000. And at that time, I thought that the market forces would regulate the journey, that we as customers would be so strong, so this world could be real. 
But some flowers have withered. And here I turn to my manuscript. The net has been occupied by terror organizations. There are various misuse and adverse effects. There is bullying, hate, sexual abuse, cheat, mutual distrust due to competing sources of information. Anonymity and speed are drivers. In addition, there are cyber attacks and risks for a global cyber war, the end of humankind. Whole societies and civilizations are so vulnerable and their infrastructures are, can suddenly be wiped out. ICTs has grown out of a control for human beings. Advanced applications require wisdom. There is so much talk about technology development, but nothing about humane development until this morning in Vekwe Ted. <laughs> humane development must be in parallel with technology development. It involves IQ, emotional competence, social competence. It's about power on various levels of society or politics, if you want. In theory, we are all empowered. Each one of us can have an impact. Technology has taken a leap into our pockets and hands. Have we become really more powerful or not? There is an increasing risk for enforcing centralization, surveillance, and various misuse of power. The visions and goals of the good ICT society for human beings need a stronger recognition and actions on all levels, including the global. ICT can and should be used to narrow the gap between subcultures. It should show similarities, or could show and should show. Emphasize synergy in the various cultural blocks and bring us all into a fruitful, thrilling dialogue. We need quite a different approach. The goal must be unity and diversity. Wonderful. In practice, it's important to discuss and develop perspectives on the citizen's role. What competences do we need? How should responsible citizens act in the ICT society? What lifestyles should we undertake? We are moving to become global citizens, all of us. What is in depth the relation between surveillance and security privacy? The golden rule could serve as a simplified guiding principle. Maybe we need an app with the golden rule saying, like the old creed, treat other people as you would want to be treated by them. I do adv advocate enforcing actions, and this could be the focus of a whole TED seminar. The distribution issue, distribution of power and resources, is still a key question and could easily be solved through ICT. Distribution of resources, human and material. Centralization or accumulation of capital and other resources is speeded up by ICT. Distribution and resources could also be facilitated by ICT. Structures, human development and dialogue are golden keys for action. Every one of us can reflect on what actions we would prioritize in our country, community, workplace and home environment. And what do we want to convey to national and international bodies to act upon? For many years, I kept saying and writing, ICT should be used for developing and deepening of humane and societal qualities. There is an inherent opportunity for the good and sustainable society. What is it, in fact, all about? It's about this. 
our responsibility for the next generation and for the planet. I have to add, this is a grandchild, one of them. And she's just now with the grandmother in Hong Kong. And on the streets is going on the umbrella revolution taking place quite around us. Anyhow, thank you.